Sand impaction is one of the most common causes of premature death in leopard geckos, and yet it can be so easily avoided. Unfortunately, time and time again, people are wrongly advised to use sand as a substrate, either by the companies who produce the item, the shops selling it, or bizarrely inexperienced owners on YouTube. I was horrified to see that even the RSPCA have advice on their website saying, and I quote, newspaper or sand can be used as a substrate. The sand should be coral or calci sand as these lizards will ingest their substrate and therefore it needs to be digestible or pass through the animal without causing it any harm. The shops that sell calci sand use the term such as allows your pet to feel right at home. Right at home? That's a very interesting statement. As discussed in previous videos, leopard geckos certainly do not live in massive sand pits in the wild. Sure, their landscape may feature some loose substrates such as sand and pebbles, but it is largely a compressed, rocky terrain. It's possible that wild leopard geckos may consume some loose substrate, and actually it's fairly common for them to do this to receive essential minerals. But keep in mind that wild geckos lead a very different lifestyle to those in captivity, and they're not constantly in contact with sand. Let's make one thing clear, calci sand is by far the worst sand you can use for your leopard geckos. Fine sands such as play sands are apparently less likely to cause impaction, but really, what is the point? The sand is purely for you, the owner, for your own pleasure. It will not benefit your gecko in any way, so really, what is the point in taking that risk? When you add water to sand, it becomes more compacted. Think about it, when you go to the beach and you're making a sandcastle, you'll fill your bucket up with sand, but you'll always add a bit of water so it clumps together and is able to stand when you turn the bucket over. Look at this sand. I use this for my chinchillas and it's extremely fine. It's used for a dust bath to clean their fur. If I add a bit of water, voila, it's now solid. A friend of mine on Instagram sent me these photos of calci sand. The first one is of dry sand, then water is added and once again the sand clumps together. Now imagine that happening in a little gecko's stomach. Furthermore, there have even been studies where calcium carbonate sands have been soaked in an acidic solution similar to the acid in the intestinal tract of a leopard gecko. Instead of dissolving, the sand actually sat there. A percentage of the sand had dissolved after a few days, but it took over a week for the entire amount of sand to dissolve in the acid solution. The fact that the sand dissolved is great, but in a leopard gecko throughout the week when the sand is dissolving, more sand would be digested, adding to the collection, which would eventually just build. When the amount of acid in the body isn't changing and yet the blockage is growing, it's going to be hard to dissolve completely before the mild to severe impaction has developed. So now let's look at calci sand. Here's a quote from a veterinary website. Calci sand. The manufacturer of the Made for Reptiles product and the pet stores and online sellers who sell it would have you believe that your reptile can get all its calcium needs met by keeping them on this substrate. Unfortunately, this is harmful for most reptiles because if they do ingest it, it will cause impactions. When you look at packets of sand that you buy in the shop, they will usually read positive things such as Calci sand makes spot cleaning both easy and accurate. Calci sand is now available in nine colours. 100% digestible, 100% calcium carbonate. What the customers aren't made aware of is that a material safety data sheet has been written up for dealing with 100% pure calcium carbonate, the stuff calci sand is made of. The MSDS states that chronic exposure, e.g. excessive oral dosage of calcium carbonate, may produce alkalosis and hypercalcemia. That's just in humans. We are much bigger than leopard geckos and can deal with a lot more food and supplements. So imagine the damage that constant exposure to calci sand is doing to your gecko. Now you are encouraged to put a little calcium dish in the tank this is so when they feel like they need calcium, they have the option to go up and have some. 
when they're constantly accidentally consuming calcium sand they're gonna have a massive problem if you're now sat there thinking oh no my gecko's been living on calcium sand what do i do firstly remove all the sand replace it with newspaper or kitchen roll in the second part i will go through symptoms of impaction what to do if your gecko gets impacted and i will be collaborating with lewis as he speaks of his first-hand experience with sand impaction and a way of saving your gecko from sand impaction if it is caught early i think i've provided a very strong case i would also like to say that none of these are just opinions they are very well researched facts Please, if you know someone who still keeps their gecko on sand or advises people to use sand or is thinking of using sand, please share this video with them. Thank you very much for watching and keep an eye out for the second part, which will be on the channel tomorrow.